Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of TeamWise 365 where you demystify Microsoft solutions for the MSP space. In today's video, I'm going to be covering the Azure cost management feature from within an Azure subscription. Before I get into today's video, if you do want to see that content around Microsoft 365 and MSPs, be sure to click on the subscribe button below. Getting into it here, I wanted to cover this video since it's a new feature introduction in the CSP model with Microsoft moving everybody to Azure Plan. If you're unfamiliar with Azure Plan, I have a link that I'll post below here, which is an FAQ about what Azure Plan is, the transition that Microsoft's making, and what it means for you and your billing model. Essentially, there's not much change that you have to worry about, but you do get access to this Azure Cost Management tab within Azure Subscriptions. So within here, if you search for cost management for a particular subscription that you manage in a customer environment, you can click on this tab here. Here you'll want to click on the cost management tab on the left hand side. So here on the cost management page, you can actually scope this to different subscriptions if you have multiple within your account. It's likely that 99% of your customers only have one subscription, so that's not really going to be a consideration. But this is where you would change that if you wanted to see individual subscriptions, if there are multiple there. Under the cost analysis section here, you can see this by looking at the preview section here. If you checked all these and made sure this is set up correctly, which I recommend just because it gives you pre-filtered views for doing investigation on cost. The most common one you're going to look into is this accumulated cost where you can see both the month to date spend for the actual cost here, as well as the forecast for the month as well too, with the utilities that are spun up in the resource groups that are uh, in this subscription today. Within here, you get to drill down into maybe high level meter categories, locations and regions, or resource group names if you wanted to drill into particular subsets of the subscription itself. So if I click into virtual machines here, it will then just bring up actual costs and forecast for the virtual machines within this subscription. So it allows you to do a lot of investigation at this level to track trends, look at spikes in usage, and see where a lot of the allocation and spend is coming from. Additionally, you can add other filters here if you really wanted to get granular with anything that you're looking into for heightened investigation, as well as the ability to look at previous quarters, months, things of that nature, all from within this particular page. The other ability here in the cost analysis preview section when this pulls up here is giving you the ability to go ahead and see all your resource groups. They're automatically sorted based off of the total spend with the high spend being at the top. You can then expand those resource groups and you can see all the individual utilities underneath. Again, sorted by the uh, utilities that are causing the most spend within the subscription. So it allows you to do a heightened investigation of all these utilities and see all these costs. You can then determine if there's things that you can do to optimize those costs as well too. That leads nicely into the advisor recommendations here, which you can click on the left hand side as well. For me, they have this as a pretty good recommendation just due to the nature of me not having any reserved instances spun up in this account. So it's showing my total potential yearly savings of $7,000. The recommendations they provide here are somewhat limited. They're not going to have like really granular ones for you to utilize, but it covers a high level when they look at reserved instances like in this case or looking at when you could potentially spin down VMs to save money as well too when they're not actually being used. From here is where you get into being able to create recommendation digest. So that's creating some type of push into your email or I'd recommend tying it into your ticketing system with your PSA tool potentially so that whenever one of these alerts does come up, it can push into there and you can take the reactive measure in that particular case, but make sure you're keeping up with the recommendations that they provide. Additionally here, you can get into the alerts and the budgets that you wanna set up as well too. For these particular subscriptions, I'll go into the budget itself here and show you what that kind of looks like as well. So within here, you can add filters if you don't want to create a budget for the entire subscription. If you just wanted to do it for a unique utility or a unique resource group, you're able to do that here. You're able to name this here. You're able to set a reset period if it's monthly. You're able to set a creation date, expiration date, as well as being able to set this threshold amount. So one, when you do that, it's going to pull this up and actually show you this graphically on the right hand side. And then from there, you can adjust it accordingly as well too. When you click on next here, you can set up alerts. 
And in this alert section, you can decide the type based off of the actual or forecast and a percentage of that budget so that you can get active notifications again that you can tie into email here as well too, which again, I would lead into my PSA tool. So then I can get proactive notifications that I can then relay to the client if there's gonna be a spike in usage that month to get ahead of that billing question that might come from that particular customer, as well as potentially creating some automation. And this is what the action group does for you in the sense of layering on an automation layer where you can click into this and you can actually decide some new workflows to be done once that budget is reached. You can do the same thing with the alerts, not just budgets within this section as well here too. You would pick your resource group. You can call this whatever you like. And then when you click on notifications here, you have some more granular options as far as how you receive this notification when this happens. It could be email, it could be an SMS text, it could be a push to the authenticator app or a call on the phone as well too. So it's a little bit more than you're used to with just email. And then for the action type, they're layering in other automation capabilities built into Azure here like runbooks, functions, logic apps, things of that nature that you can then use to trigger events to occur. So one of those things might be using a runbook here to then go ahead and stop VMs, for instance, or scale them down or, or anything like that. So it's creating this automation layer so that you can potentially save costs or cut things off from your budget or things of that nature. Additionally, if you want to get really granular, you could get into looking at creating logic apps that are tied to your PSA tool, which would then create certain events like being able to add additional invoice line items in your agreements, for instance, or your contracts that relate maybe to a figure that is above maybe a reoccurring line item that you have on there for Azure. So you can get really custom with that type of integration and the budgets and things of that nature. So I wanted to show you all that because there's a lot of customizability that you can use as well too. What I'd recommend in that particular case is to kind of monitor this over time and then figure out when you send out these alerts about hitting a budget or hitting a forecast or something like that, what actions do you typically take and can those actions be automated? The final piece here, lots of MSPs touted that they have customers who'd like to see read visibility into this particular subscription just so they know what's being spun up in the account and how their costs and how they can influence that with the things that they're doing to try to grow their business. So with that, you can go ahead and click on add, click on add role assignment. And from here, you can add somebody into the reader role if you really wanted to, that's what I'd recommend. And you could add somebody within the company organization. Now, when you do this, they are going to see the MSRP rates in that particular subscription. So basically what's publicly available for those rates versus maybe your discount that you're getting with your CSP provider. The thing that you have to keep in mind is if you are tacking on additional margin to Azure outside of MSRP, then you need to keep that in consideration when you give them this view. They're going to see those costs and they may question your bill or something like that, or at least it's a candid conversation or a deal breaker in some cases to giving them this access and this level of granular visibility. So that's everything I want to showcase for you guys in this video today. This is everything with Azure Cost Management. It's now available to you with Azure Plan. Check out that FAQ for more information on that. Otherwise, like or subscribe like I mentioned earlier if you do want to see more content around Microsoft and the MSP space. Thanks guys. Have a great day.